he will you know in uh, certain films that will jump out at you but in lord of the rings they just keep coming and they're all so well written and uh, anyway yeah so i've been i've been nailing that recently a lot sort of in my daily life just putting that back in check on <laughs> nice nice <laughs> um so yeah uh, that's my sort of guilty pleasure well lord this of, week. I, no, like, i'll agree with you lord of the rings is incredible it's epic and although mm. i can't immediately recall the soundtrack straight away because i don't think i was focusing on that at the time like i can imagine it's mm-hmm. equally epic right it's totally. i imagine it's huge lush cinematic orchestral well, it will go through there's that and then they'll have those for certain parts of the film and certain sort of um, themes but then there'll be a a solo violinist you know playing like a sort of um old folksy kind of vibe for nice the rohan people or whatever yeah. and you know it'll just sound yeah just do I I can't describe it. It's just it's amazing. One of the reasons I love sort of orchestral music as well, um, I go through phases of that. Is I don't know exactly what's going on a lot of the time. Like I can I tend to analyze music when I listen to it. Um, mm. So it's nice to sort of have something that's like so much is going on. Massive choirs. I don't know. Yeah. Huge yeah. orchestras. Well, because we're I both can't... from a sort of contemporary, you know, like pop music background. Aren't totally. We? Like it's a bit. It's totally. a bit of a, an escape, isn't it? When you when you listen to some classical music or some choral or, you know, Gregorian chant or something that's like so yeah. far removed from what we play, you know? Absolutely. It's great. It's, it's a total, I can just not, I'm not thinking about it. It's not, it's not been, um, yeah, it's not being analyzed, which is, um, yeah, really, really nice sometimes. Um, so yeah, so that's been my musical journey this week and I've right. been loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also picturing little sort of, uh, you know, when Gimli's walking along, little bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that's all. It's amazing yeah. what music can do, isn't it? Like it can totally. sum up a character like to within, yeah. you know, to a T. It's crazy. 100%. 100%. It adds so, so much. Nice. Um, and I, I used to be the uh, thing, I used to think that if you didn't notice the soundtrack in a film, it was doing its job. Yeah, I, I kind of still, with certain films I kind of do, but um, it does. That's not the case with Lord of the Rings. It, it just jumps straight out at me, but I love it. It mm. gives me the, the goosebumps are going. Nice. It's not even necessarily the film, you know. It's the music sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's but good. I think there are two sorts of soundtrack, aren't there? They're like there is one camp, the Lord of the Rings camp, uh, and the sort of uh, Ennio Morricone. I think I pronounced his name right. You know, the, who did the old westerns and stuff. Sure. Where it's sure. like it's original music. Uh, you know, and like Hans Zimmer and people like that, and it's original and it's cinematic and it's very, you know, it's all been written specifically for the thing, for the film. And then there's mm. the other s- side of the soundtrack game where it's like Tarantino soundtracks or like yes. uh, Guardians of the Galaxy when it's like, you know, existing pop or rock tracks and yeah. they just find a great way of just slotting in those tunes that, totally. that you know, that really G, G you up right when you watch them. Yeah, it, right? but for sure. E- both of them equally great, but sort of, I find they always sort of slot into one or the other, right? Yeah, I agree. I think there's maybe a third category you could say where it's purely atmospheric. Um, right, And yeah. it's, it's just there to give a, a mood and not necessarily give you a hook to hold on to. Yeah, Maybe yeah. with maybe a lot of horror films and a lot of um, yeah. thrillers and that kind of stuff where, where you haven't got this character. It's just like, oh, that's this is their theme. They've just arrived on screen. You've got this massive, this horn line or something that's, that's um, giving you a heads up that they're there. Yeah, and also, and it's not going to be like a, a song that's like from popular culture already. Yeah, yeah. Um, totally. Have you seen Baby Driver? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, and he's got okay. the headphones in the whole time, right throughout sure, the film. Sure, sure. And the entire, all of the action is sequenced in time with the tracks. Yes, yeah, which, such a good film. Yes, I've forgotten yes. about that actually. Yeah, I was thinking really, about. Really I was thinking about Drive for a second while you were talking. Then the. Uh, the mm-hmm. is it Gosling Ryan Gosling it's Gosling that film. you got yeah. it yeah and I think that's a bit more of that third category one that you're talking about where it's just very there's lots of like ambient synths and that sort of thing yeah very uh, vibey just yeah, yeah vibey totally. that's exactly the right thing yeah it's not mm. you never know when one song finishes and another one ends it starts totally. do you know what I mean totally whereas, yeah whereas Baby Driver's uh, like the Guardians of the Galaxy style thing he's got a tape very similar, he? he's yeah. even got a playlist on his little tape that he yeah yeah. I think he's got an iPod Classic because oh, that's what okay, that, right. that's the tape of this generation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm making it a bit more vintage than it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> iPod Classic. Yeah. God, they yeah. were great. In fact, I found right. one of those in the drawer the other day. Like, no way. I think it was quite a large one for iPod. I think it was like 120 gig or something. Yeah. Well, they like, were pretty big. The large, yeah. Yeah. They were. They were the biggest out there. I think. Like, yeah. Mm. 
they were good. They the were only, good. The only that, problem the is... the clicking, you got... And you <laughs> yeah. were, like, swiveling around. Oh, I felt good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is you can't get the music off it. <laughs> right, so if you, if you like... You know, <laughs> obviously, I think that, that was to stop you from stealing loads of music, right? If you just gave, yeah. your, you, you know, yours to your mate or whatever. However, if it's your music that you've originally, like, uploaded onto it, but then mm. that's from, like, two or three computers ago, and now you sure, want all sure. that stuff back off it, you can't. Mm. No. It just syncs with your, you know, yeah. the, the, the four songs that you've got on iTunes nowadays <laughs> that you've bought, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember the iPad, the iPods, rather, you if you plugged it into a mate's computer, it would just wipe the iPad. Yeah, iPod. yeah. And start syncing all his stuff. <laughs> yeah. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Getting angry at other people. Other people. I'm quite yeah. good at that. Yeah, me yeah. too, actually. I'm very good at getting angry at everyone else, basically. <laughs> Yeah, at the moment, I'm getting very angry at a lot of people. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is now a therapy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but how does that make you feel, Greg? <laughs> Are you just getting feel- angry at, like, what, physical, real-life people, like, in front of you in your life or people online? You know, uh, people in, out in the world. A mixture of both. I think a, a good, healthy mixture of both. A <laughs> bit, yeah. bit of column A, a bit of column B. Yeah, yeah, cool. No, mm. that's good. You've got to keep it even. Yeah, I think so. As long now, as you, as long as you hate everyone equally, that's that's it. No, no problem. No one can right? fault, no one can fault you for that. No. Yeah, obviously there's a problem if you start picking certain people. But if like, mm. like when I'm at the airport, I just get you know tall, short, black, white, man, woman, old, mm-hmm. young. If they're getting in my way, I am grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very grumpy. Totally, totally. You know what? I think, and I haven't come to this conclusion lightly, but I think that. I hate the vast majority of people. <laughs> <laughs> the society that we live in is Yeah, yeah. I, I struggle sometimes just just um conversing with uh people, especially yeah. online. It's not really conversing with them, just looking at what they say really. Yeah, yeah. Is the main issue. Oh, but you've got to avoid that, man. i yeah, I right. I do that it's and it's right. like a it's a cesspit, isn't it? It's just yeah. like you know, right or wrong, it's like it mm. just winds. It just winds me up. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that I'm right on a wide variety of subjects. I'm probably very wrong, but just mm. it just. I realise at the end of it, I'm like, God. You know, even if I've chipped in once or twice, you know, I've just spent an hour just fuming, and it's got me nowhere. Yeah. I mean, it felt sure. good at the time because I was like, that's that's ridiculous. How you? Yeah. How can you say that? And I'm thinking this and thinking what I'm going to write and. I rarely actually type the tweet or whatever it is because I'm just like, <laughs> nah, I can't say that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, you know what I mean. But it's it's it. Like, maybe it's a good therapeutic thing to write something down. Maybe mm. not actually in the tweet bar because you might accidentally send it. But like, you know, just to write something down and think, this is what I think. This is why I think you're wrong. And then go feels better mm. for just writing it out or just saying it totally. out loud. And then just going, that's all right. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change anyone's mind or. And then it's just the classic, it. like write, write. You write the letter to the bo- the boss. Yeah, yeah. But you never send it. No. You never send it. <laughs> Otherwise, you've got like an Adam Sandler film if it accidentally yeah. sends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you've got to spend yeah. the rest of the film like getting your job back and stuff. Yeah, yeah totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, you're right. That's why I stay away from Twitter because it's just yeah, there's just nothing there. Speaking of nothing there on Twitter, uh, that's a good little segue because mm. we now have Twitter. We now have Facebook, we now have Instagram, we now have YouTube. Uh, I don't know what we're going to put on YouTube because there's no visuals, but <laughs> mm. we've got, uh, yeah, we have all the platforms now. So you can follow us on all the all the, the all the various ones and keep oh, up to date. Smooth. smooth. That was very smooth, Adam. <laughs> Too smooth. I'm very impressed. No, it wasn't. It was we, just smooth enough, actually. We didn't even practice it. No, bloody <laughs> hell. God, you're so good at this already. <laughs> I need to up my game. You're bringing gavels. Where's your You're marketing, man? Segways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get free beer from monkey breweries. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's about no. time we had a sponsor, isn't it? We should, I uh... think so. <laughs> I think we deserve it. After, what, four episodes? Yeah. We deserve a I sponsor. So. We've sat and we've nattered, <laughs> drunk a few beers. I yeah. think we deserve some free stuff. <laughs> Bloody hard work it was. <laughs> I've got a couple of talking points here, Adam. Great, great. So I was having a conversation with a person recently from a friend group that um, who I like, by the way. All these people, I'm gonna, I'm not mentioning any names or anything, but I like all these people, but disagree with them quite a lot politically. 
Got you. So um, we were discussing whether rioting is ever the answer. It's good. That's a good topic. So I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want to get into nitty gritty of specifics here. Yeah. But let's assume that the issue at hand is a very real one. Uh, and yeah. people are rightly angry at something that's happened. Yeah. Let's assume that because I don't want to get into the, the mud there. But yeah, yeah. Um, is writing ever going to solve the problem? What do you reckon? Oh, that's, I've been thinking about that a lot, obviously, as probably most people have. Um, you know what? I, I think if you think about it in very basic terms, it's almost like a sort of Christian way of thinking, isn't it? Where it's like, do two, right, do two wrongs make a right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, just my gut feeling is that if you, I don't feel like, you know, hurting someone or smashing something or burning something, I don't feel like that ever helps. Obviously, there's, there's yeah, there's been a lot of horrible things that have happened that are, people are quite rightly hugely angry about, of which I'm one. I'm very angry about them as well. But yeah, I, you know, recently I saw this video, by recently I mean this morning, saw a video of a, a bloke who was, uh, this was actually from the 90s, it wasn't a recent thing, but similar situation. And this bloke had had, clearly had some of his shop or his property or something burnt down and smashed up. Um, and he was just in tears, this bloke. And he was just like screaming at these protesters like, you know, he was basically saying, I'm on your side. I'm this, like, I'm the same as you. I want the same mm-hmm. thing. But like... I've tried to make it and you've burnt my shop down, you, you know, and, and I, that just made me think like, I was really upsetting. And I just thought, God, like that's not, you know, you've got to direct your anger to some, to something more worthwhile, right. Or to, to somebody who it might be a bit more effective on. But if you're just like, if you're smashing stuff or stealing stuff or burning stuff, it's like, it's not, I, I don't feel like it helps, you know, but I, but I'm not yeah. in any way undermining, undermining the anger felt by a lot of people because it's mm-hmm. completely justified and you know if i was in the same position i'd probably feel like going out and smashing something up as well I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm i'm sure i would i'd be you know like like i just told you i get very angry when someone cuts in front of me at the airport with their, yeah. <laughs> their suitcase trolley so you know well, if some if something <laughs> terrible happened to me or you know yeah one of my family or something like I'd, I'd want to do the same but i'd also have to try and stop myself and think how can i like like, how can I get my point across? Like, I don't know, maybe in a different way. I'm not sure. But mm. but pro- protesting, I, I mm. completely agree with. But I, sure. I think it's just this sort of smashy, burny stuff that's that I'm maybe not on board with. But, but you know, I'm completely willing to be disagreed with. Totally, yeah. No, I think I think you're right. I mean, this is kind of my... That was my sentiment, really, to the person I was speaking to. They were sort of basically legitimising the, the violence that was going on at the moment, I was basically saying similar things to you. Like, I don't think it's going to help. It's going to make it worse. So, for example, uh, in a lot of situations that cause riots, generally they're sort of socioeconomic kind of problems. So mm. maybe poorer areas, bad things are happening. So however right the, the the protesters or the rioters are in their anger, by by destroying their <clears throat> their local environment, Mm. They're not going to help help their local environment at all. It's going to set them back yeah. in those socio economic ways, which are going to again going to have knock on effects to make it worse going forward. But I, I, I tell you, I think you're. I think we're both on the same page there. But let me throw let me throw a devil's advocate at you um, and see if um, we can have a talk about that. So people with a, with any sort of rioting, um, they they did this with Brexit protests where there would be a lot of fighting and uh, with. Um, the environmental protests, I forget their names, like Instinction Rebellion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So where they would block roads, stop people going to work, that kind of stuff. Um, mm. They always bring up the suffragettes as a uh, similar um, yeah. movement. So a violent, somewhat violent movement that didn't just protest. They went, they, they would throw rocks through shops. They ran in front of the king's horse. They did all this stuff. How would you, I don't know, mm. level that? Um, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I I don't uh, I don't think I know. Obviously, I know all that happened with the suffragettes, but I don't know specifically like the nitty gritty sure, about sure. it. Um, so yeah, I don't know how quick did it did that happen relatively quickly. Was that just was that because they were smashing like 
Because it, it, so, it, it was specifically, was it specifically targeting, like you say, the king's horse or like 